Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another discussion. It's actually been about five minutes since, since the one I just did but I was so inspired and I'm in the woods and I'm loving life and I just it's rolling right out of me. So uh, this discussion is on being bilingual and being fluent. So before you hang up on me because you're like oh no she wants me to learn a new language. That would be great actually for cognitive reserves. That really saves off uh, the natural cognitive decline by aging but no that's not what this is about. So this is Kimberly Quinn and I'm thrilled to have this discussion about being bilingual and fluent as far as the languages of the mind and body. So we've talked about thoughts coming first and feelings second and action, right? So changing thoughts changes feelings, changes actions, changes your life. So the language of the mind is thoughts, right? And the language of the body is feelings. And both are important. So here's what I'm going to say to you is it got to be very hyper conscious, hyper aware of both work, synonymous. Of, of how you're feeling because the the body's trying to tell you something. In fact, it's often been said that if you want to know what's going on in the mind, ask the body because they're intimately connected. So we want to be fluent in both languages, thoughts and feelings. So thoughts come first, yes. And by the time they turn into feelings, like, oh, what's going on with me? And it's of utmost importance to uh, be aware, really, really aware of familiar feelings because... Uh, and because they are giving you their big fat clues. And if we don't, like we just talked about the unconscious in the last video, it's very important to be aware. Like you get a wave of shame, you get a wave of envy, you get a wave of something because especially by the time we're 35, I just saying Joe Dispenza talks about this. If you're, we are walking balls of familiar, me familiar memories. And if you think anything is gonna change for you without going in and unhinging those, Okay, the unwanted thoughts, which lead to the unwanted feelings, nothing is going to change in your life. It just isn't. It just absolutely is not because we walk around all day about 95 to 96 percent of everything we say and do is coming from the vault of the unconscious. And it is very strong, very, very strong. And so, again, we actively seek out to confirm this stuff all day long. I was saying it partially in the last video. We just seek out from people. If, 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 our, if our, you know, uh, feedback loop that's just become such a strong part of our hard drive is about I'm a victim I'm a victim I got to stay in this because I need to stay underneath because I get attention that way and I get noticed that way and I feel alive that way I need drama because I feel alive that way uh, my inner critic I've, I've got to constantly search for ways to not be enough we are walking around seeking all this all whatever it is for you whatever your your mantra is we're seeking that and confirming it all day long it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and so until we um go in and unhinge that it's just it's getting worse and worse and worse because remember there is no such thing as a memory as far as like reaching in and pulling out a little colorful ball like in disney's inside and out which actually did a great job of explaining memory i just don't want to say that i've used that before in my classes but in reality they're neurons wiring together neurons that wire together fire together and the reverse fire together wire together so what happens when we allow because the word is allow familiar memories we get sucked into thinking about something that was a week ago 10 years ago 15 years ago we are sort of um falling in love with the past becoming addicted to the past and I, I um, and then we're residing there, and the brain says, "Okay, I found it," because the brain wants to please you, much like a golden retriever. Speaking of which, say hi, G. In a good way, in a good way, it wants to please you. It's like, "Oh, look, I found that memory. I pulled off that old memory off the shelf of that bad thing that happened at your our tenth birthday party." And and then memories are also changed each and every time we pull them off the, sh the shelf. They're altered every single time. So ever since that first memory, they're not the same. So it's important to remember that too. So familiar memories can really be the death of us from a mental health perspective. It's very, very important to realize feelings are not facts and challenge them. I can't say enough how important it is to be aware because we get sucked in on a daily basis and it just becomes stronger and stronger and stronger with each time we do that. So if you want to, be, if you want to make active change, we've got to be bilingual in the language of the mind which is thoughts and the language of the body which is feelings and in fact as we know the brain loves patterns right Con basically di addiction to substances is obviously complicated addiction to anything is complicated but largely specifically when it's um well substances basically in a basically it is addiction is when the brain 
sort of doesn't need the mind's direction anymore and it gets so good at whatever it is that it can do it on its own and it can't stop it's like i got this i got this we have you know three drinks at night or we are relationship junkies and we're going to codependent and when we when we we are very comfortable not being treated well so then we break up with that one then lo and behold there's another one showing up the door wearing a different outfit yeah this you know and so it becomes the body's like i got this i got this i know what to do i know how to be used and abused i know how to be taken advantage of i know how to remain a victim i know how to remain in in a place of self-doubt and i know how to remain in a place of shame i've got this and we can become in a sense addicted to familiar emotions that had their roots and causation 5, 10, 15 years ago. And it get, again, it's really strong. So I can't emph emphasize enough how, just like I did in the other video, we've got to commit. First be aware we cannot do what we do not know, right? And then commit to unhinging that and, and rebooting the computer, your computer brain. And brain isn't exactly like a computer, but it works in this analogy. Because we can't really rewire until we've hit the delete button on all that toxic crap, okay? And then the pattern thing, positive affirmation. Remember that thoughts, when they grow up, become beliefs. And the beliefs are what are the beliefs the system is the new hard drive. Well, the old beliefs that are bad are also the hard drive. So your new hard drive as far as living your best high vibe self, creating the life you want to live comes after You've deleted all that stuff. Keep it rolling all the way through, but know that it's, as the more we clear out the, the mind attic, the more room there is for all your positive, new, high vibe thoughts and ideas to create and live the very best life you can. All right, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful Northern Vermont with a lovely bird symphony. Have a mindful, very deliberate day.